You're listening to the Cyberwire Network, powered by N2K. And now a word from our sponsor, SpyCloud, the leader in operationalizing cybercrime analytics. Traditional threat intelligence is a thing of the past. Cyber criminals are stealing vast amounts of credentials, session cookies, and financial data every day, and it's hard to keep up. SpyCloud is the trusted partner businesses turn to to fully understand their darknet exposure risk and neutralize threats before it's too late. SpyCloud alerts your organization as soon as an employee or customer's data appears on the dark net, so you can act faster than bad actors to prevent cyber attacks like ransomware, session hijacking, account takeover, and online fraud. With insights from the industry's largest repository of recaptured data, protect the digital identities and systems most important to your business. Get your free corporate darknet exposure report at spycloud.com slash cyberwire and see what information criminals have in their hands today. That's spycloud.com slash cyberwire. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CyberWire's Research Saturday. I'm Dave Bittner, and this is our weekly conversation with researchers and analysts tracking down the threats and vulnerabilities, solving some of the hard problems and protecting ourselves in a rapidly evolving cyberspace. Thanks for joining us. Today, I'm speaking with a security researcher from SpyCloud Labs, who prefers we simply call them James. We're discussing unpacking info stealer malware, what we've learned from reverse engineering Luma C2 and atomic Mac OS stealer. I mean, so the name kind of gives it away a little bit. Um, the full name of a stealer is an info stealer, information stealer, um, and their entire purpose is to steal information. They attempt to infect a victim, and once they're on a victim system, they will steal credentials. Um, they will steal files that exist on the, on the system that might be interesting to the uh, to the malware author or person running the malware. They'll also steal uh, emails. Uh, if you have emails on your on your on your system, uh, they will steal uh, two factor authentication secrets, uh, which is also technically still a file. They, in the case of Atomic Stealer, uh, they'll steal your keychain. Uh, which has all of your passwords on it. They're in it. They their entire goal is to get onto your system and steal everything that would be interesting to somebody uh, who is running the malware. Um, and then once they're there, they will exfiltrate that information uh, and send it to the ma- to the malware author. Some info stealers will also then load additional malware. Uh, like Atomic Stealer uh, has the ability to load a trojanized or like an infected uh, ledger live application uh, and this ledger live application which is a wallet a crypto wallet uh, so this infected crypto wallet uh, will actually steal your seed phrases if you have ledger live and you're infected with this uh, it'll steal your seed phrase when you put it in um, which is very important for managing crypto coins other malware like luma uh, in has the ability to just load whatever malware uh, the uh, the people who are running the malware specifies, which is actually a very common feature of info stealers. They will act kind of as a loader malware. But yes, yeah, so that's kind of just a high-level rundown of info stealers. Well, I mean, uh, for these two that we're talking about today, Luma and Atomic uh, on, on Mac OS, what was it that brought these to your attention? Here, we uh, like at, we're at SpyCloud, we get a lot of and we get a lot of logs um, from like malware, um, and we see a lot of Luma, and we see a lot of Atomic Stealer, um, and so we are very interested in looking at these um, malware families to see if we could uh, determine like how these families behave, so that defenders can better protect against them, so that we, maybe we can hopefully see a little bit less logs. Well, let's dig in together. Uh, do we want to go through both of them as a group, or does it make sense to do them one at a time? Either or. We could do both as a group. Um, one at a time also works because one is Mac, one is Mac OS and one is Windows. Okay. Well, let's go through them one at a time here. Uh, why don't we start on the Mac OS side here? Tell me about Atomic. So 
it's pretty interesting because like You've already, I mean, at least when I when I was first getting started um, in computers, you always heard the claim like you would never get a, 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 a malware or a virus on an Apple device, um, which was like a very old claim. But Atomic Sealer is malware designed for Mac OS. Um, it is malware as a service, uh, which means that the authors who write Atomic Sealer sell Atomic Steel like access to the Atomic Sealer uh, malware panel. To anybody who wants to purchase it for a monthly fee, um, they sell it for a very hefty fee of between $500 and $1,000 per month, which is pretty expensive for malware. But this gives uh, people who want to run uh, Atomic Stealer access to the panel, and they can create builds of Atomic Stealer, which is essentially the generated malware um, that they can then infect victims with. The authors who make Atomic Sealer might be running Atomic Sealer. They're not the only people running Atomic Sealer. There's lots and lots and lots of people running Atomic Sealer. And so when we found Atomic Sealer, we were looking at something that we call cybercrime enablement services, which is like uh, paper install networks um, like Stax Media or Install Bank, which we covered in a different blog, um, the Stax Media write-up, for example, these uh, services will insert like download. If you've ever, if you've ever possibly downloaded um, like a mod for um, a game or mm-hmm. uh, crack software, I know we're not supposed to download crack software, <laughs> but uh, or free software on a, on a website, and you've seen those download buttons on those websites. Um, I can confirm that those download buttons are one hundred percent malicious. They result in various different kinds of malware but if you're running mac almost 100 percent of the time it is uh atomic stealer um but so when we were looking at uh these cyber crime enablement services we found a atom- we found atomic stealer samples and so we started looking at those atomic stealer samples to figure out how atomic stealer functions so that we could so the defenders could like better protect um their environments and looking at atomic stealer was like super interesting um because we were able to find samples like that were very old and then samples that were very new and atomic stealer is one of the only malware or i don't want to say one of the only malware families that's ever done this but it's one of the few families that i've ever looked at that i would say has ever gone backwards in its development mm-hmm. cycle when i was looking at i we actually mentioned this in the blog but um when i was looking at atomic stealer they when they did their exfiltration in older samples, they had a very sneaky method where they would generate a zip file in in memory and then exfiltrate without ever writing anything to the disk. Um, and that's very sneaky because it makes it very hard for de- defenders to identify that. Um, however, in newer versions of Atomic Stealer, they write everything to the disk and makes it very easy for defenders to identify it. I've, I've never seen a, a malware go backwards in developing uh, cycles like that, but it, it was just a very interesting development. Um, as we noted on our write-up, though, we think that maybe Apple internal security might have had a, a detection for writing a zip in memory, so that might have been why they went backwards. It was just very interesting in their, de- in their development cycles that they essentially went backwards in their... Um, development, but as to how Atomic Sealer actually functions, it steals um, it steals a, a variety of browsers, um, it steals a variety of crypto wallets. It has a very large list of extensions. Uh, there's more than fifty extensions in this list of extensions that it steals from. What's most noteworthy to you in terms of the things that it'll target? Most of these are crypto wallets. Um, ah. A large portion of these are crypto wallets. Um, so it's really looking for uh, like crypto wallets to steal uh, crypto coins from. Um, and that, that seems to be what it's what it is solely focusing on. Um, like I see tra- I see like uh, MetaMask, I see uh, Tron Wallet, um, I see Starcoin. Like I see a ton a, t- a ton of crypto wallets. Uh, it has a file grabber, which is very typical for um, info stealers. But for this one, it only targets a very select few amount of files. Um, it targets TXT files, um, document files, um, RTF files, wallet files, and anything that has a .key or .keys file. So if you're storing your passwords on your computer in raw text, which you never should be doing, don't store it as .key or .keys files. So in terms of the the functionality here on the Mac side, I mean, how, how does it go about uh, staying stealthy and avoiding detection? To be honest... In my opinion, it seems very loud. 
like when it when it makes its exfiltration folder, it writes all of the um, files to disk. So I don't, um, when I have done threat hunting, I've only done threat hunting in Windows environments. So I don't know what um, Mac uh, like detection environments look like. So I don't mm-hmm. know if this is, like from a Windows detection perspective, this looks like very loud behavior to me. But from a Mac detection perspective, this could be very hard behavior to detect. Um, I just don't know what it looks like um, from that perspective. Yeah, that's fair. Well, let, let's switch over to Luma then. I mean, what, uh, what's going on on that side of things? So Luma is very interesting. Um, like a lot of other uh, uh, Windows malware has a dynamic config, which is something that Atomic Sealer did not have. Um, but so Luma, like a lot of other, um, a, a lot of other uh, Windows uh, families, has a dynamic con- config, which was something that actually impressed me, was how, how dynamic their config was. Luma works very similarly to all other uh, stealers in that they steal um, they steal browsers, they steal extensions, they steal files. But what's also interesting is that Luma steals Luma has hard coded email theft, um, but you can also specify additional uh, email theft in their in their uh, modular config, um, which is very interesting uh, to me because they you can steal pretty much any email client that exists on a system with Luma. They've also got, um, for their two-factor authentication theft, they are able to actually steal um, Authy's, uh, like Authy's two-factor authentication secrets, which was another uh, interesting inclusion because for a while we, we saw them attempting to steal Authy's authentication secrets but not actually succeeding in it. Um, so it shows that they are like, not only are they developing their malware, but they're also testing their malware and environments and actively trying to make their malware better. And like it shows that their development team is pretty, pretty advanced. But yeah, they also have um, they have a couple like interesting uh, interesting uh, features in their configuration too, um, such as the ability to change whether or not it takes a screenshot um, and to change whether or not it deletes itself from the computer. Um, and to change whether or not it does a language check, uh, which I would think that you would want the language check to be on every single time because the language check checks to, to make sure whether or not it can run in, in Russia, Uzbekistan, or Azerbaijani. Uh, like anything in those language sets, uh, or the three language sets that it can't run in. So you'd think that would want to be on every single time, but you can actually disable it with in their config. With over 8,000 threat hunters analyzing over 65 trillion signals daily, Microsoft works tirelessly with the federal government to keep our nation's data secure. This 30-year-plus partnership is driving mission innovation that is secure by design. Whether optimizing your existing defenses or tackling advanced threats with AI, Microsoft gives you the intelligence and the automation you need to defend at mission scale. Let's work together to stay ahead of emerging threats and secure your mission anywhere. Learn more at aka.ms slash fedcyber. That's aka.ms slash fedcyber. It's interesting to me that that um, users of these, you know, the, the people who are paying this this monthly fee, it seems to me like they can really dial in depending on what they're interested in. You know, like you pointed out, Atomic is seems to be focused on crypto, but if I were someone who was interested in, you know. Uh, email compromise, I could be dialing these in to help me with that. You know, there's. <laughs> sort of, it's like it's like a Swiss Army knife for uh, whatever information you want to access on someone's system. Is that an accurate perception on my part? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a very accurate ex- uh, accurate perception, especially especially with Luma C two, um, and really any info sealer that has dynamic um, configuration modification, hmm. um, because it allows, uh, and that is a lot of um, stealers. Uh, Luma is not. Like a like, I don't want to like just highlight Luma as like a unique sealer that everybody should purchase. 
a lot of info stealers these days have dynamic config creation where people who are purchasing the info stealers can modify what they particularly want to steal so that it's custom for them so that they're not just getting like say that they're targeting like a government worker and the government worker is not going to have a crypto wallet they're not going to have they're not going to have like steam they're not going to have telegram but they are going to have email they are going to have these very sp- particular document files um that they want to target they can customize the config to only look for those particular things and ignore everything else so that it's not mm-hmm. wasting uh, computer cycles looking for these documents and these files that don't exist. Uh, right. Because if you're wasting computer cycles, you're going to get detected earlier. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In terms of organizations you know, best protecting themselves against this, I mean, what are your recommendations? I mean, obviously, you know, we, we said earlier, don't download cracked software. <laughs> but but beyond that, you know, what, what are best practices here? It's hard because it comes from like a lot of different sources um, because there's, I mean, there's the email side to worry about. You have to worry about phishing. Um, you have to worry about cracked source software. So it requires more than just like one solution fixes all. Um, I think it requires like user education and it's not just user education at work. Um, like use your education at your job. Uh, because what we've learned is that a lot of compromises at work environments end up taking place it, with people's personal devices. Um, so I think that there needs to be, I know there's already a ton of user education, but like more thorough user education about like, hey, if you are working at, say that you're working at like a financial job, you have now taken on the risks of the financial job um, in your personal life. Like you're, you could be targeted in your personal life uh, more heavily than somebody who is like working at a non-financial institution mm. uh, because like financial institutions are targeted heavily. Um, those are very good targets for cyber criminals. Um, and so like, I, I think that it's, yeah, there's not going to be a very simple solution, but like more education on like identifying threats, identifying what like a suspicious download looks like, making sure that people stay updated, of course, um, like update on updates and software, um, so that you can't have compromises. Um, but yeah, but unfortunately, there's not just a simple solution. One one solution fits all, but I, I, I wish there was. Yeah. I mean, are these the types of things that typically antivirus would detect? Sometimes they do get detected um, by antivirus, uh, especially if somebody's running an older version of the malware. But because these are malware as a service providers, like one of their business goals is to provide malware that is clean and can't be detected by, uh, by antivirus. Um, so they are like actively working to make sure that their malware is not detected. So you can't always rely on antivirus to detect um, the malware, Um, especially if it's a very fresh build. Every so often, people will slip through. Hmm. What about persistence here? I mean, is it... Are, are they trying to kind of get in and out with a quick hit or are they working hard to stay on that system? It's very much an in and out with a quick hit. Uh, Atomic Sealer does not do any form of persistence. Uh, Luma has, as far as I've seen, Luma doesn't really have persistence. Like Luma has the option to not delete itself, but the persistence is based on the installation. Um, so how it was installed. Um, so if the if it was installed by something that didn't install persistence, then it's not going to have any persistence. Um, so a lot of these are just, what I have seen are just smash and grab. Like the person installs something, it steals it, and then it's gone. Yeah. You know, I'm curious, before I let you go, for you and your colleagues there at SpyCloud, when when you take on the task of reverse engineering something like this, could you kind of walk us through that process? I, I think a lot of our listeners would be interested to hear how you approach something like this. So I have kind of a, a different approach than a lot of different analysts um, because I am a, um, I do like static analysis and reverse engineering in a debugger and a disassembler. Hmm. Um, whereas a lot of analysts might use a sandbox. Um, so if if I can do the static or do the analysis without having to use a debugger, um, I'll just use the disassembler. Um, I'm pretty adept with uh, reading assembly. Um, I actually prefer it over um, decom- decompil- decompilation into C. So I'll just 
throw it throw the but the binary into um into like my dis into my disassembler and i'll read it in assembly and i analyze it that way um which i've been told is a unique way of analyzing <laughs> I, I I would consider it a bit of a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, for other samples, uh, if if like I if it has like obfuscation or if the string if the strings are encrypted or something like that, I'll have the sample in a debugger, and then I'll have the sample in the disassembler, and I'll step through it in the debugger and in the disassembler. And that's the same for Windows. It's the same for Mac. For Mac, it took a little bit to get my uh, analysis environment set up uh, because Mac does not. Uh, really wants you analyzing malware, um, at least like not on a non-Mac system. So I had to like figure out mm. how to set it up. But it, it is once once you get everything set up, it it works the same. Um, there's unfortunately not as many debuggers for Mac as there are for Windows, but that's just because not a whole lot of people do reverse engineering on Mac. But I used Hopper and it worked really well. Um, so plus plus one to Hopper. Ida also works on Mac, of course, but it's very expensive, but you know. So help me understand the scale of this. I mean, how how this compares to some of the other uh, problems that we have out there. Um, where does this rate in the uh, the, the universe of, um, of malware that we need to consider? Looking at our data and looking at like the logs that we have collected and also just looking at like um, stats that we have collected over time from different malware families, uh, we see large amounts of infections daily from sources that aren't email, that are just like users clicking on crack software, users clicking on mod links. Somebody's looking for VSTs for their, um, for their audio software and they accidentally download something malicious. Um, and these are astronomical numbers. I'm talking like hundreds of thousands of infections per day um, was one of the families that I saw that was pulling those numbers. And so like these are these are large threats to the average user. And the average user is also normally corporate, also works for like corporate companies. Like everything that targets the average user also ends up hitting everybody. Uh, if you work for if you work for government, if you work for a company, if you work for a mom and pop shop, you're going to get hit in these very large spray attacks. And the the cyber criminals are very good at monetizing um, what they end up getting from these. So they know how to cap they know how to capitalize off of like a .gov email address. They know how to capitalize off of somebody who works at a big co company who has access to lots of VPN connections. Um, they know how to turn those connections into actual money. Um, and so it's very dangerous um, to just not be aware of these uh, campaigns and um, to just be focused on like email or just be focused on one form of phishing. Um, I think holistic training of like all the kinds of threats that are available will be very helpful um, towards everybody to protecting against these. Yeah. Don't underestimate these, I guess, right? It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Keep them on your radar. Our thanks to James from SpyCloud Labs for joining us. The research is titled Unpacking InfoStealer Malware, What We've Learned from Reverse Engineering Luma C2 and Atomic Mac OS Stealer. You can find a link and additional resources in the show notes. Struggling to secure on-prem apps with modern identity? Don't worry, you're not alone. Join industry leaders from Fortune 500 organizations to secure your apps on any cloud with any IDP, regardless of your environment's complexity. Meet Strata's identity orchestration platform, Mavericks. Say goodbye to the headaches of app refactoring and legacy tech debt. With identity orchestration, you can modernize legacy apps to use MFA or passwordless authentication in a few weeks, migrate from one IDP to another, and so much more without changing the app. No matter your IAM use case, Strata extends the value of your current identity investments. And the best part? You can try it for free today. 
visit strata.io slash cyberwire to share your biggest identity challenge. And they'll hook you up with a complimentary pair of AirPods Pro. Don't miss out. Visit strata.io slash cyberwire. That's strata.io slash cyberwire. And that's Research Saturday brought to you by N2K Cyberwire. We'd love to know what you think of this podcast. Your feedback ensures we deliver the insights that keep you a step ahead in the rapidly changing world of cybersecurity. If you like our show, please share a rating and review in your podcast app. Please also fill out the survey in the show notes or send an email to cyberwire at n2k.com. We're privileged that N2K Cyberwire is part of the daily routine of the most influential leaders and operators in the public and private sector, from the Fortune 500 to many of the world's preeminent intelligence and law enforcement agencies. N2K makes it easy for companies to optimize your biggest investment, your people. We make you smarter about your teams while making your teams smarter. Learn how at N2K.com. This episode was produced by Liz Stokes. We're mixed by Elliot Peltzman and Trey Hester. Our executive producer is Jennifer Iben. Our executive editor is Brandon Karp. Simone Petrella is our president. Peter Kilpie is our publisher. And I'm Dave Bittner. Thanks for listening. We'll see you back here next time.